Bicycles for children in East Winter Garden. Big Christmas events, including one I want to see you at. The Festival of Lights is here, and it's accompanied by live music. And will the residents of Winter Garden put up with helicopters landing in their backyard? The date is December 2nd, 2021. We're going to go through these stories and more. Welcome to West Orange on the Go. My name is Austin Arthur, and this is where we do local news and comment. And when I say local news, I mean hyper-local. West Orange, this is your news. We begin in 10 seconds. You're listening to West Orange on the go. Brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the go. As we have reported... Former Fire Rescue Battalion Chief Stephen Davis was fired by Orange County in October after he refused to reprimand unvaccinated firefighters. Now the community has banned together to offer assistance to Davis and his family during the holidays. What they referred to as Steve's Pub Crawl was hosted on Tuesday, November 30th in order to raise funds for the Davis family. Davis is a veteran of the U.S. Army and had 14 years of service and experience at the department in Orange County. And he is still unemployed. In other news, a group of children at the Maxi Community Center in East Winter Garden will be getting a nice surprise during the Christmas season when the Central Florida Cyclist Club delivers new bicycles and helmets for them later this month. Now, this is the second year the CFC Club, led by founder James Bertrand, has collected money to purchase bikes and accessories for children in East Winter Garden. And he says, quote, Last year, with the pandemic and everybody staying in their house, cycling really became big, and everybody became interested, and they were buying bikes and riding. But he goes on to state that he realized not everyone in our community could afford a new bike, and he wanted to provide some local children with the gift of cycling. He presented the idea to his cycling friends, and they were all in favor of raising money to buy a few bikes. They ended up purchasing seven, and they gave them to youth at the Maxi Community Center based on recommendations he received from Cherie Hodge, who works with the children in the after-school club. A GoFundMe account has been set up this year with the goal of $7,500 to purchase 14 quality bicycles. We will link... This GoFundMe in the description. Residents from across West Orange came together for Matthew's Hope and its annual Harvest of Hope Garden Party fundraiser on the 20th at the Ocoee Lakeshore Center. This year's fundraiser featured unique themes from local organizations, costumes, music, food, and lots of fun, all for a good cause. Now, in the paper, there's lots of neat pictures you could check out, and yours truly is in one of the pictures, and for those of you who know me, I'm sure you will not be too surprised by seeing the theme of my costume, my wife and I attended, and you can find the whole thing in this week's paper. Another thing that you can find in this week's paper is by Amy Questenberry, who did a great Holidays Are Here section. Now, in this section, all kinds of events that are going on this year. So you could go and you open the paper and you see all the different holiday events. So it looks like it's in page three here. And you could see a lot of things are going on in West Orange. And that is a great place to check them out. Now, in addition to picking up this week's paper, so you could see all the great pictures that are laid out for you from past events the last couple of weeks here in the community. And also everything that's coming up and all the wonderful stories. I, you know, I can't go through all the details. So you got to pick up the paper. In addition to these events that you'll see in this week's paper, there's one big one coming up. I'm going to talk more about it next week, but I want you to mark your calendar. December 11th. That's a Saturday. That's next Saturday, December 11th. Huge event. I mean, there's going to be snowfall coming off of the building of Gymnastics USA. So more next week on that, but I want you to mark the calendar Because I want to see you there. I want to see you there for this holiday event, this Christmas event. Okay, now, on to the next holiday news. Oakland has a musician on staff. 
and he will present a holiday concert of Hanukkah songs Thursday, that's today, December 2nd, on the porch of the Healthy West Orange Arts and Heritage Center at the town of Oakland. Jay Martyr, the planning and zoning director, now he's been the planning and zoning director of the town of Oakland since 2016. So he's going to be doing Hanukkah songs there in the town of Oakland today. And that gives me the opportunity. Happy Hanukkah. And that's till December 6th. So that's till Monday. And I hope every evening is blessed with God's favor. In education news, Orange County Public Schools has announced its finalist for the Teacher of the Year Award. And Corin Metz of Thornbrook Elementary School here in West Orange is one of the five nominees. Now, there's a piece here on Miss Metz. She talks about how she had a minor disability uh, while going through school, while going to the Orange County Public School System. She talks a little bit about her struggle with that, how she overcame it, and how another teacher inspired her to do teaching. So a real nice story. I encourage you to check it out. We have great teachers here in West Orange. And let's go to our hyper-local sports this week, where we also have great coaches. Number one, Foundation Academy's Ian Garcia was named one of Kicking World's top performers. The list included high school players from around the country and even college kickers. Garcia kicked field goals as long as 45 yards. Number two, Olympia quarterback C.J. Brooks led Class 8A in passing with 2,719 yards and 35 touchdowns. Brooke completed 59 of his passes. He is still weighing offers from several Division I schools. Number three, Olympia announced that former assistant coach Rachel Benarek will take over as the head water polo coach. She is an Olympia alumni and has been an assistant for the past four years before being offered the position. Number four, Horizon Boys soccer team picked up another win the weekend before Thanksgiving to improve its record to 3-0 and with one draw. The gain win was against their rival team, Akoe. Number five, West Orange County teams competed at Metro West Conference Girls Basketball Tournament at Wakaiva High School. Dr. Phillips defeated West Orange to take third place in the tournament after losing to Apopka in the semifinals. Wakaiva won the tournament after defeating the Blue Darters. And now we're about to get into the last story here. But before we do, I want to tell you about Foundation Academy, a school that has been in West Orange since 1958. They have three beautiful campuses now, all Christ-centered, great education programs. This is my favorite school, not only professionally because, well, they're a sponsor of this program, but personally, my daughter goes to that school. I can't tell you how blessed I feel to have her there. Their slogan says it all. Foundation Academy, where character matters. Winter Garden City Commissioner Chambers were filled beyond capacity as approximately 160 residents attended a community meeting on Tuesday to discuss a helipad permit request by Regal USA. Chairs were even placed in the hallway to accommodate the overflow. Regal USA's headquarters neighbors the Brandy Creek and the Oaks at Brandy Lake communities. Residents were surprised by a recent series of low helicopter flights from the proposed helipad site, raising concerns for safety and the impact of noise levels. Interim City Manager John Williams said a special allowance was made for those flights, but no further flight approvals have been issued. Regal USA's Senior Vice President was there and stated to the audience that we are here to listen to you. He went on to explain the company's need for a helipad, but conceded the need for further discussion. He said, quote, companies such as Duke Energy and Florida Power and Light use our technology to monitor vegetation growth that destroys power lines during hurricane season. So the helicopter pad is critical to support our customers when time is of the essence. End quote. 
Now, his statement failed to put the audience at ease. Brandy Creek resident Lynn Fitzgerald was the first to comment, quote, we have veterans in our subdivision who lived through the Vietnam War. And believe me, helicopters are not a pleasant sound for them. End quote. She also cited possible noise disruptions for young children and residents working from home and the fear of declining property values. Quote, this project will change the quality of our lives. The meeting lasted more than 90 minutes and included comments from approximately 30 residents. Blake Price, a resident of the Oaks at Brandy Lake, wanted information on possible zoning changes and controls on helipad activity. Quote, just because you use it once a month doesn't mean that when you decide to move your company and somebody else moves in, that it doesn't get used daily or hourly, end quote. Nicholas Wilson, whose home is across the pond from Regal USA headquarters, described his experience during last week's helicopter activity. Quote, I was actually touching the wall of my house. It's solid, pure cement, and I could feel it vibrating. Oaks at Brandy Lake resident Ken Alessi made an impassioned speech against the project with a slideshow presentation of FAA regulations he said were violated. Now, the piece goes on and has more details, more quotes from the residents. But the thing is, I was at this meeting. And I'll tell you, it, it got pretty heated in there. But I want to do something a little different here before I close on this final story. I was looking at the Facebook page, and it's always interesting what you see on the Facebook, what you see on the social media comments. You know, I thought we'd go through a couple here. You know, this is hyper local news and comments. So let's see, we have one comment here. You have a picture of all of the residents, and they're all there in the, in the meeting room. You could see it. You could go to the Facebook page, West Orange Times and Observer, and check this picture out. And you have one comment here. Oh, look, a room full of Karens. <laughs> you know, and then I think somebody appropriately uh, replies, not necessary. <laughs> You have somebody else that gets kind of annoyed with the citizens here that they're uh, all upset about this, that they, you know, chose to live near the Colonial Drive and that it's on them or something like that. You know, I, I got to tell you, I take a different take. You know, I'm a capitalist, but I'm also a community man. And when these two agendas collide... You have to decide which makes more sense. You know, I believe in property rights, so obviously this business owns the property. But we have a civil society. We live in a republic. And even at the local level, that matters. I don't think there's a person in West Orange County that on a personal level would be okay with their local government rezoning an area to allow a helipad essentially in their backyard. I mean, a few hundred feet. So I think we can all get along on this one if we actually put ourselves in the shoes of our neighbors. Because if it could come to Brandy Creek and Oaks at Brandy Lake, it could come to you. So, my comment... Let's not put helicopters in the backyards of our citizens here in West Orange. This has been Austin Arthur with the West Orange Times and Observer. And until next week, have a happy and blessed weekend. West Orange on the Go is brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the Go.